I don't know who's been praying to the algorithm gods on my behalf, but thank you so much because we have so many new subscribers here today. Just out of nowhere, and I don't know if it's because somebody shared one of the videos somewhere, or people really just like beyond belief and that video blew up a little bit, but thank you guys so much. Whether you've been here for a long time, or you just got here yesterday, thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. It means more to me than you will know. Everybody wave to the new kids, because we've got a doozy of a video <laughs> coming in today. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel where I cover nostalgic, obscure, or otherwise strange content. I had a completely different video planned tonight. Uh, I was finally, finally gonna do the Little Shop of Horrors video that I've been planning to do forever, and I promise that video will be the very next video I post. But, <laughs> hear me out. I just watched uh, Curtis Connors' video on Pinocchio, A True Story. You know, that new Pinocchio that just came out and everybody's talking about how bad it is and how the voice acting is hilarious. Father, when can I leave to be on my own? I've got the whole world to see. And in that video, Curtis Connor was mentioning a bunch of other interpretations of Pinocchio that have happened over the years. And one of them was The Adventures of Pinocchio, starring Jonathan Taylor Thomas from 1996. And a light bulb went off in the back of my brain and I went, I got a request to do that movie like a year and a half ago at least. And I put it on the list and I completely forgot. <laughs> I'm so sorry to whoever sent me that request. I think it was a couple of people, actually. But I fell down the rabbit hole, watched the entire movie, and let me tell you, it's terrible. <laughs> well, I'm sure some people really like it. And if you do, that's great. I have this, like, weird uncanny valley thing. I don't like puppets, and I don't like bad animation, and this is the worst of both worlds. But instead of telling you any more about it, I'm just gonna jump into the movie because there's a lot of it. It's actually only an hour and a half long, but it feels like you have to watch this movie for like a day and a half to get to the end of it. I'm just gonna start talking, or keep talking. I've been talking for several minutes, but now I'm gonna talk while the movie is actually playing. <laughs> That's what I do on this channel. I remember now. <laughs> His name was Geppetto. And he was shy. It feels like the narration, who we later learned to be Pepe the Cricket, Jiminy Cricket, for those of you who've only seen the Disney version, but it feels like he knows how weird the thing that he's talking about is. Oh, and very much in love. I love it. I carved this heart for dear Leona. So we see Geppetto, who is young at this point, carving his initials and, like, the girl that he's into, her initials into a little heart. You know how you do. Magic is bound to happen. And then I guess the universe is like, oh, love, we like that, and sends a bolt of magic lightning to zap the tree, and now the tree is magic. Yay! <laughs> Miracles don't grow on trees. Miracles are made in the heart. Yeah, okay, sure. So one day, Geppetto is gathering wood, and he gathers up wood from the magical tree. He goes into town where he... Looks like you've dropped your wood, senior puppet maker. ...exchanges harsh words with a group of kids. Maybe I should be more careful next time. Ah. And then he wheels his wood... That wasn't the right way to say that. He wheels his working materials into his home where he just has a ton of terrifying puppets. I'm tired of hearing the two of you. Stop it! He tries to burn the magical wood and the wood was like, ah ah ah, I want to be a puppet. Our heart. He looks at it, realizes that it's the tree that he carved his initials and his g girl's initials into like years ago and he's like, okay, I'm gonna carve a puppet around this heart that I've carved in. Open wide, give me a big smile. So he sets to work carving the creepiest puppet ever. The arms and legs are moving independently of each other before he's even assembled Pinocchio. He makes sure that the heart is positioned right where Pinocchio's heart would be, so he has this, like, etched out heart. Blue eyes, just like your papa. And these big, dead blue eyes. You're made of pine. Pinocchio. He also says that he's naming Pinocchio Pinocchio because he's carved out of pine, which I never made that connection ever in my life. Maybe I'm just uninformed. <laughs> then Geppetto goes to take a bath, and aside from the fact that he takes a bath with his clothes on, which I find very disturbing, <laughs> Pinocchio comes to life in the other room, and oh my god! <laughs> Pinocchio is so disturbing, I don't have time to be disturbed by anything else. He walks into the bathroom. 
gives Geppetto a damn near heart attack and then commandeers his bathtub. He's like, I'm gonna get in the bathtub too, which is weird. I is weird. You can't be real. Well, he's alive, so don't give him a complex. Just roll with it, Geppetto. Pinocchio, stop. And then Pinocchio dips. He's just like, okay, bye. And he climbs out the window and Geppetto's like, what the hell is my life right now? So he chases Pinocchio all around, who's running around pretty much naked, which is disturbing. He's he's scaring pigeons. He's just kind of being a nuisance all around. Oh, no! And then he eventually falls off of a roof and into a pile of clothes. Take off my underwear right now! He's lost a leg in this whole process, but apparently that means nothing to a puppet. It just gets popped back on, I guess. If you are a real boy, You'd have to have a doctor. It's true, he would possibly be dead if he was a real boy, so maybe being a real boy isn't all that. Ciao, Geppetto. The clothes apparently belong to the girl that Geppetto was into enough to carve their initials into the tree that Pinocchio was carved out of. I know, kind of weird. The weirdest part being, they weren't actually together. She married his now dead brother. So there's some drama there. Does he have a name? Pinocchio. But they give Pinocchio clothes. You even gave him your heart. Yeah, she sees the little carving of their initials in his chest and she's not suspicious. But anyway, she's also not weirded out by the fact that a puppet is alive. Pretty much most of the people in this movie are like, oh, a talking puppet? We see that all the time here in Italy. So he walks Pinocchio home and he click clacks his wooden feet back on the cobblestone and he blinks his big scary eyes. We briefly see Rob Schneider, who plays one of the bad guys, hitting on the girl character, who's another one of the bad guys, but that's not important right now. Do you see what I see? The important thing is that they see Pinocchio and they want him. Like, they're like, that's a, that's a talking puppet. We could make money off of that. Which is fucked up for a number of reasons. But that's kind of the point. They're gonna burn me at the stake. No, no, they've stopped burning people. Oh, that's good. They might hang you, though. Oh, I feel like we're back at square one. Pinocchio tries and fails to make friends with a boy. <laughs> Runs into the bad guys who are very creepy. May I? And then they get punched by a guy. Take my kids ball, would you? <clears throat> Which they kind of deserve, for sure. But then they go to this other bad guy. There's a lot of bad guys in Pinocchio, pretty much in every version. But they go to this guy who, in this version, is the leader of a big puppet show. And they're like, we have a talking puppet, so we can make you a lot of money. They tell him where Geppetto lives, and uh, the puppet show man shows up at Geppetto's house. Don't even breathe. He tries to hide Pinocchio amongst all the other puppets that are not talking and sentient. Which, by the way, that's gonna be terrifying for Pinocchio. Imagine, like, just being alive and having a bunch of other beings around you that are not alive. Like, that's really creepy. Also, they live in a wooden house, and it reminds me of the gingerbread thing, where it's like, is the man made of house or is the house made of man? He screams where he does not know. Don't toy with me. He can't get Geppetto to sell Pinocchio, though, and then Pinocchio runs away, not to the circus, but to school. Bless him. Because I'm not leaving this house to look for you again. Well, guess what? You're going to. Hey, Woody. You ever get termites? So Pinocchio is being bullied by the kids in school, and he kind of gets into a tussle with a couple of them. Lay off my friend, Woody. <laughs> and then he gets called up by the teacher, and he starts lying, and his nose starts growing. <sighs> Typical Pinocchio things, you know? <laughs> and then he sneezes sawdust on the teacher. It's very horrifying. And he gets expelled from school after being there for less than 10 minutes. Poor kid. He then wanders into a bakery where he steals a bunch of pastries. I don't like the eating sounds that they gave Pinocchio, by the way. <laughs> There's a big commotion as they chase Pinocchio down. You're under arrest, signore. Hey. Pinocchio gets away, but Geppetto gets thrown in jail. Poor Geppetto. I love you, Papa. I love you, Papa. So depressing the way he's like, wow, I wish I had family. <laughs> so sad. <laughs> and then he goes home and he meets Pepe the Cricket. Give me a pee, a pee, a pee, a pee. Who is his very 
poorly animated conscience. You look at Pinocchio and you think, wow, there cannot be worse CGI than that. And then you look at Pepe and you're like, yes, there can. I'm not a pine dog. I'm a boy. Not yet. Also, he's just crawling in and out of his brain. It's very disturbing. I feel like I keep using the word disturbing or horrifying a lot. It's because that's how I feel. For such a cute little puppet. I have a heightened sense of anxiety from start to finish in this movie. I'm so sorry. And then the cops show up and take Pinocchio in, and then Geppetto's on trial. You will pay 20,000 lira to the bakers and 10,000 to the court. And he has to pay a bunch of money or he's going to be thrown in prison, which seems like a fucked up system. I propose the court allow me to pay the fines. And then the scary puppet man is like, I will pay his debt if he gives over his puppet child. <laughs> the story of Pinocchio is really dark, by the way. Well, you can offer him his table straps and cold winter nights. Geppetto obviously doesn't want to do that, but also, they kind of guilt trip him with the whole, like, you can't be a good parent to Pinocchio. What's a family, Papa? Give him to me, someone who doesn't care about him at all, and I'll be a better parent. And then Geppetto, like, gives in. I can't be your Papa. You're not a real boy. Out of his sadness, he lashes out at Pinocchio, and he's like, well, you're not a real boy, so I don't love you, which is definitely going to give him some trauma for later on in his life, but anyway. So Pinocchio lives with the shady puppeteer now. I'm sorry. This lady always just shows up at the most opportune moments. Is she stalking Geppetto? Is that what this is? <laughs> so now we see a horrifying puppet show, or at least I think it's horrifying. Maybe that's just me. All the world is waiting. Maiden, I'm a savior. Pinocchio is the star of the show. What are the chances I can find? There's this random song, it's the only song we get in the entire movie. I feel like it was written to be like a Celine Dion covered blockbuster, because this was 1996, but that did not happen. Now this is all yours, Pinocchio. Pinocchio is making a good amount of money too, but Pepe is like, hey, here's your first lesson as your conscience, kid. Money ain't everything. <laughs> Lorenzini loves me. That's not love. Oh, and also, he doesn't care about you at all, kid. He's fooling you. Pepe is harsh, but honest. <laughs> and then I guess in the big finale of the puppet show, he, like, burns most of the puppets, which is terrifying. Geppetto made that. I won't let them burn. And poor Pinocchio decides to do the right thing and try to save the other puppets' lives and ends up catching the entire theater on fire. <laughs> Pinocchio has been alive for all of 10 minutes, and he has already lived through so much trauma. I feel so bad. Here, ah. So with Pinocchio escaped, the puppet master sends Rob Schneider and the other bad guy to go and retrieve him. I know, I have a gift for summary, but let's continue. Grab him! Ah! Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo! Pinocchio goes to the river, and I guess he just knows that because he's made of wood, he'll float. So he's just like sitting in the river, just like floating downstream, and there's a reprise of the song that we just heard. Just for this moment, take your life into your hands. It's so unnecessarily 90s. Where would you go, given the fact that you're made out of wood? Geppetto is looking for Pinocchio, but his wannabe girlfriend is a lot better at actually finding Pinocchio. A forest! But eventually she convinces him to go to the woods and look for Pinocchio. Smell that pine. Doesn't he smell like pine? Like he's made of pine, right? Isn't it kind of odd that he loves the smell of pine? Maybe that makes sense. I don't know. I don't have time to get into that. But you can't stay here. Go away, please. I do not like the way that the camera coverage uh, handles Pepe, the way that he just jumps right into your face. Let's make tracks! Let's go! It's very disconcerting. I'm just thinking of new ways to say that I feel uncomfortable. Uncomfortable! It's also very uncomfortable. Like, a lot of this camera work is just making me seasick, but anyway. Go away! Pinocchio! He runs directly into the path of the people that are looking for him, and then into a church. So they follow him into the church. I heard that coin from like a mile away, damn. I know you, you're friends with Lorenzini. Oh, we're finished with him now. So they start actively lying to a child. Forgiveness means that when you did something really wrong, you want somebody to tell you 
that it wasn't really, really wrong. I love that that character does not know what forgiveness is at all. <laughs> Miracles make your dreams come true. And you could buy one. In true televangelist fashion, they're like, Hey kid, you want a miracle? You can buy one. Will you people be quiet? You guys are about to make the monks swear at you. Be quiet. <laughs> they tell him that if he buries his money in the ground, it'll grow more money, something like that. Watch that clock. They tell him to watch the clock for an hour, which sounds so boring. And so he's just left there to depressingly just stand and watch this clock. <laughs> And then a dog pees on him, which is unnecessarily gross. What are you doing now? Watching the clock. Why? And then Pepe comes back. I, I don't know why he's like never there for like the biggest decisions of Pinocchio's life, but he tends to just do this disappearing act thing. But he's back now. Now what say we regroup and talk about your papa? How did he jump in one jump all the way up to that clock tower? Your papa wants you, no matter what you're made of. He tries to tell them that these people are scamming him and that his dad really does love him. Miracles are made in the heart. You said that before. And I know what they mean, and it's a good sentiment, but also Pinocchio being alive is a miracle, and he literally grew on a tree. He's a wooden boy. Miracles don't grow on trees. Miracles don't grow on trees. He's chanting this sentiment to himself on a rock when a group of boys that, unbeknownst to him, I guess, is led by the puppet master right up. Come with us! We're going to the greatest place! And they're like, come with us to this really cool island where there are no rules and cotton candy everywhere! I feel like anybody who grew up with any version of Pinocchio, especially the Disney one, knows exactly where this is going and is already getting, like, a knot in their stomach just thinking about it, right? Because this is easily the most disturbing part of Pinocchio. But we're not quite there yet. That is! Geppetto and his girlfriend slash sister-in-law? It's weird. They're still chasing Pinocchio down, by the way, just in case you're wondering where they are. Pinocchio loses his hat, but eventually gets to Lost Boy Island, or that's what they call it, right? That's what I'm calling it. Anyway, he gets there, and is like this big, old-timey amusement park. There's wooden roller coasters and candy everywhere and games and anarchist children. It's like Dollywood. He's out there. Geppetto finds Pinocchio's hat. Sorry, there's a lot of Italian names and I'm trying to not mix them up or say them wrong. He finds Pinocchio's hat and is sure that he has gone into the sea, so he starts paddling out to sea to look for him. And Lita, I think that's her name, she's like, I don't think he went out to sea. You've never been in a boat in your life! But Geppetto won't listen to her. You should never have married my brother! You should have married me! Oh! <laughs> she sounds so angry. 25 years you take to tell me! So I love that this is how he's decided to tell her after 25 years of pining. Oh, it's a pun, because like pine trees. Anyway. <laughs> You're too late! I'm not waiting! This is also so unnecessarily dramatic. This is like a, like a soap opera. Back with Pinocchio, Pepe tries to talk some sense into him after he catches up with him once again, because like I said, he's never there for the moments that matter to Pinocchio. Your idea of fun puts my antenna way out of but he tries to convince him to leave the island, but it's like a lost cause at this point. Pinocchio is literally a kid let loose in a candy store. <laughs> Pinocchio also gets shot, which by the way is something that everybody's freaking out about in the brand new Pinocchio movie, but like he gets shot several times here. And also he does this weird like exorcist thing where he turns his head all the way around. I don't care for it. Anyway. <laughs> He and a bunch of boys get on this roller coaster, and here is the dreaded donkey scene. I am so sorry if this gives you nightmares tonight. Sometimes people leave me comments where they say that they watch my videos to fall asleep at night, you know, they find them relaxing. I'm very honored by that, but then sometimes when I'm covering things like this... I feel really guilty. <laughs> if you were almost asleep and are now jolted awake in terror, I'm so sorry. <laughs> so one by one, the boys are turning into donkeys or jackasses, literally. I don't want to be a jackass. Pinocchio has turned into a donkey partially. He just kind of has these big wooden donkey ears that then get snapped off. It looks very painful. We've been acting like jackasses, so that's what we turn into. So then Pinocchio runs out and he's like, everybody stop having fun. It'll kill you. Here I provide you with the most wonderful place to frolic. 
And then the puppeteer guy comes out and tries to wrangle all the kids back into doing stuff that'll get them killed. And then one of the kids that's turned into a donkey kicks him in the stomach and he goes flying into the ocean. He's turning into a monster! And all the kids are like, he's turning into a monster! And then we don't see him, so I thought that he had died, but that is not what happens in this version. I don't know if it happens in other versions, I can't remember, but just wait. Thanks, Pinocchio. All the boys are set free, and now Pinocchio is found by Geppetto's almost girlfriend. He's out there somewhere looking for you. She tells him that Geppetto's gone out to sea to look for him. Pinocchio then gets into a rowboat himself and goes looking for Geppetto, and she's left on the shore for a second time feeling very frustrated at the men in her life. You don't even know how to swim! Well, the man in her life and the little puppet boy child. You know what I mean. So then we see the whale looming underwater and I think everybody remembers that one part in Pinocchio no matter which version you're more used to where he gets swallowed by the whale. Lorenzini, he must be the sea monster. But in this version they directly imply if not right out say that uh that is the puppeteer. He's transformed into a whale so do with that what you will. Pepe, oh. I thought you left me. Ahoy. Damn it Pepe, can you be present for more than 10 minutes at a time? So now the two of them, Pinocchio and his conscience, are swallowed whole by a whale. You know just like Jonah from the classic VeggieTales movie. <laughs> I'm going to die here. I'm sorry. Coming through. Meanwhile, Geppetto has been in the stomach of the whale for a while, and he's gotten to the point where he's making puppets out of fish bones. It's very depressing. Papa! Pinocchio. But then Pinocchio finds him, and they have a reunion, which would be a lot more sentimental if they weren't literally in the esophagus of a giant whale. <laughs> well, all whales are technically giant, but you know what I mean. They try to climb up the whale's throat together. I don't know why Geppetto didn't try to do this on his own, but anyway. Go, Pinocchio. Not without you. And the whale's throat is not big enough for them to get through. So Pinocchio remembers that if he lies, his nose grows out really big and he decides to wedge the whale's throat open by telling a bunch of lies. Sounds painful for the whale. I never ever missed you. I never wanted to be your son, I want to stay a pup. He also really said, traumatize your parents back. But they make it out alive and they get washed up on shore. I'm sorry for not, for not being a real boy. And then Geppetto's like, I'm sorry that I gave you away. And Pinocchio's like, I'm sorry that I'm not a real boy, it's very sad. What you feel to me, my son. And then Geppetto pulls a Yelena from Black Widow where she's like, it was real to me. It was real to me. I can't do her voice very well. And then Pinocchio cries and one of his tears falls onto his chest and turns him into a real boy. I'm a boy. There's no fairy godmother in this version. Miracles are made in the heart, Papa. And like, that's great. But every time Pinocchio turns into a real boy at the end of every version, I always think, doesn't this just mean that he's more, like, mortal now? Like, I know it's a good thing, but like, they literally said in the beginning that if he had fallen off that roof, it would have been a lot worse if he was real. So like, you gotta be careful now. <laughs> But it's really cute. Union rules, I'm with you forever! I just gotta get some sleep! Forever, huh? You've left about 16 different times. Union rules! Oh, so are you telling me that there's a, there's a morality cricket union? That's news to me. They go to take Pinocchio home, and now that he's a real boy, he stops and manages to mess with the two bad guys that were messing with him before. Gold? Gold! <laughs> Would I lie? He's like, aha, I can lie now that I'm a real boy. <laughs> Feels a little bit like the antithesis of the moral of the story, but anyway, they're bad people, we'll let it slide. Don't you just hate that kid? Not as much as I hate you. Oh, and look, they've been turned into a cute little fox and cat. How about carving me a girlfriend? What in the? Pinocchio. Geppetto and Leona lived happily ever after. And then Geppetto and her name is Leona, I guess. I was wrong about her name. They're together in the end. It's a happy ending for them. And all the donkeys turn back into boys. And then the narrator, Pepe, says that all the boys that were turned into donkeys turned back into boys once they did enough good deeds to be turned back into boys. They had to do many good deeds to earn the privilege. 
Which is good, but also traumatizing for them, right? Like, they get kidnapped to an island where they're given a whole bunch of stuff that kids would love, and then they get turned into donkeys and then have to work to be human again. That's terrifying for them. As for me, I took a house on Lake Como. Okay, cool. Bye, man. <laughs> That's the end. Okay, final thoughts. This movie terrifies me. <laughs> it falls solidly into that uncanny valley thing. Also, just the, the story of Pinocchio just always kind of scares me anyway. It's a very harsh tale about morality, but I just know that there's a lot of people out there who remember this movie and might remember it fondly because it came out at a time when I'm sure a lot of kids watched it and probably liked it. So I'm sorry it's taken me so long to remember to do this video, but now it's here. Like I said, I promise I will do the little Little Shop of Horrors video about the 1986 version that I've been trying to do for months now next and uh, yeah thank you guys thank you for being here thank you for watching liking commenting subscribing sharing everything you do to support this channel means the world to me if you're new here and I know a, a, a good group of you might be and you're a fan of nonsense maybe consider sticking around because I post nonsense all the time and remember my name is Avery I'm a youtuber if you say so because thanks to you guys this is technically a YouTube channel bye